God damn it. All right, so I don't know if that's picking that up. It's a PO, there we go, PO132, which uh, in the description, camera's not really getting it, but just take my word for it. It's an O2 circuit high voltage bank one sensor one, uh, which is just an O2 sensor. Uh, it's the upstream one on the Jeep. So, uh, oh, sorry, I'm a little frustrated today because this wasn't supposed to happen and it's freezing out. Um, so this is kind of an impromptu video, but, uh, <laughs> hello and welcome everybody to Tony's Toolbox. Um, so after scanning it, coming back, got this little guy, that's what we needed, it's about 60 bucks. Um, in the event, uh, someone's not watching this for pleasure and is actually trying to learn something, uh... If you think this is it, without um, a scan tool, what's usually going to happen is, uh, on occasion, the because um, the, the upstream controls the, the mixture. So when it's faulty, uh, your car runs, or your Jeep, this Jeep at least does, I don't know about every single vehicle, they go into safe mode, uh, it's a TJ, and what they do is they run rich so you don't cause any damage to your engine. So, um, what you would call it? Uh, sorry, let me just shut this shit down. Um, so, basically, it's going to run super rich. You're going to waste a lot more gas than you normally do. And I kind of noticed little stuff happening. And then today the sensor kicked in. Uh, it started puttering a little bit and, uh, running really rough at idle and all these things are symptoms of this exact thing but I scanned it just to make a hundred percent sure um, so the car is stupid hot right now so I'm not gonna go play around on the exhaust quite yet um, but I'll hop into it maybe in 20 minutes when it cools down a bit we're gonna have to probably put a torch up to the O2 sensor because I live in the rust belt so it's probably gonna be stuck on there pretty good um, in theory this, if you live somewhere nice like Texas or Florida or something of the like that doesn't salt their streets, this is honest to God a 10 minute job. Uh, I'm up in Chicago, so it's going to be rusted on there. And depending on how easily it comes out or it doesn't want to come out, uh, can turn this anywhere into a 15 or 20 minute or all the way up to an hour. You know what I mean? Uh, I've done plenty of these. As you can see, there's maybe this. The, camera's not gonna pick it up but it's starting to snow over here too so very very faint i don't know if the camera's getting any of that oh, a couple little pieces are whizzing by very very st super super faint but um so i'm gonna let it cool down a bit shouldn't take too too long and then we'll get uh we'll get cracking uh also real quick while we're recording let me show you kind of where it's at. Uh, keep in mind, this is the upstream one, okay? In front of the Jeep. All right. And that's driver's side. But we're going to spin around, so I'll repoint it out once I get under there and kind of point it out to you. Uh, you know what? It's going to be easier under the door. Okay. So, I'm under the driver's side. I'm trying not to touch too much. That's the exhaust right there. It's going to be stupid hot. There it is. It's not a big deal. You just unclip the sensor. I'm not sticking my hand up there right now. You just unclip that plug. It's just a little uh, clip. Wire comes out, and that's what you have to crack loose. Uh, they do make a special socket for it. You can get a wrench, especially on this one. The downstream one sucked. I had to do that one last fall, I think. And that one's like above. And that one would have been hard to get a wrench into. This one looks possible, but I got the tool for it, so I don't really care. So I can show you what one of those look like too. But uh, that's where it is. It's not a big deal. That's all you got to do. Unclip that one hook, unscrew this, put the new one in, and clip it back up. I'd suggest putting anti seize around it when you install the new one. Um, because, you know, it leaves less headache for you or the next guy, depending on how long you keep the vehicle. Um, so, that's really all there is to it. I mean, I'll show you guys once I crack it loose and 
we'll get the rest uh you know i'll show you guys the whole the whole thing but th th this is a really quick easy fix depending on how hard this thing is going to be to break out so and real quick um this is what they look like that's the o2 one um this one's just a uh like a socket for it they also make one that's um quite literally just it's kind of a waste if you ask me because this whole kit you know is just a little bit more than the wrench but um they have this uh it's essentially just a ratchet and uh with that thing fixed on it so it's kind of like a single use thing here but and just so you don't you guys don't think i'm lying there's some more of this still. it's coming it's coming <laughs> lame this is gonna suck today <laughs> all right uh i'm gonna try to crack it loose and as soon as i get it to move a little bit i'll start recording again okay um if it's really really hard and i gotta bust out the torch maybe i'll try to record that too but i don't know how i'm gonna do that that's like a really three-handed job so we'll see well i'll do the best i can i don't know guys okay so it definitely took a little persuading but um it came out um i definitely had to use heat i used map gas because it's hotter and i cut the wires so that little thing was actually starting to spread it was on there so good so what i ended up doing was uh, i put a box and wrench over it this long one that i have and uh cracked it loose with this one and then i just gear wrenched it off because the swing room is so small and it sucked but it was grabbing one tooth it was grabbing so it took forever but i got it out and here we are so with the new one they have this capped off for a reason do not touch that part do not do not do not okay uh so what you got to do is once once you're ready to do this you pull this little plastic thing off it just slips right off and the threads are going to be right here so if you want go ahead and put a little anti seize you don't have to i just suggest it like i did earlier in the in the video for either yourself next time or the next guy that has to do this and then just tighten it in doesn't have to go crazy tight but you want it nice and snug Plug the other end back in and we're done. Uh, I'll show you guys the final result once it's all done, okay? All right, a couple quick things and then we're done. I did get the new one installed. Uh, I did have to use heat. Um, here's the old one. Cut the wire. It's ro got rounded off a bit, but I got her out. It sucked balls, but it came out. A um, couple things that I forgot to go over. So... With these things, if you've never used one before, the whole reason it has a slit, but it's also kind of why it spreads, is picture, where's the wiring harness? Uh, picture this still connected, obviously. So the whole point is for this to go through here, you know what I mean? The wire will go through the top, so you can slide it on and take it off, okay? Uh, the other quick thing, and then we're gonna try to uh, starter up um is i didn't show this on the disassembly so i figured i showed it on the reassembly front of the car so back there let me point her out this is the connector okay you can see the new plastic versus the old one so it actually connects all the way up here at, toward the back of the engine uh this is the driver side okay um so uh whatchamacallit it just kind of droops down it's got this protective sleeve on it to keep the heat off the wiring and it hooks up in here but i broke my clip so i gotta go buy one they're like 80 or 90 cents this little screw right here um uh, it's that's where it, it holds it in like this so it keeps it away from the motor okay uh if you break them it's not a big deal they, they sell them individually they actually slide into this part right here and then it's just like little plastic ridges that hold it in um, the other thing is when you're reconnecting it, don't worry if you didn't pay attention. These only go in one way. They are dummy proof. So you do not have to worry. Just unplug it and plug, you know, it's only going to go in the one way. All right. Um, let me show you the bottom. Reassembled and let's, uh, see if this works. Um, sorry about this one sec. Let's close this up. There's a new one. In like Flynn. Alright. 
up the last thing. I'm gonna do this off camera because um, if you don't have a scanner, I wouldn't suggest it. But an easy way to clear codes once they're done is to unhook the the battery. But I got a scanner, so I can clear it from that. So I don't know if it's gonna clear itself out now or if I'm gonna have to manually clear it out. Nope, looks like it's gone. Was the problem. That'll do it, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed.